It is the one month countdown. If you are still in it, it means you need to listen up. It might give you the edge that you need to get the job done. This is your fantasy mailbag. Glad to see you. Lauren Shahadi alongside Scott White. We are getting ready to answer all of your questions. So get your pen and paper out and take notes. This is the first one of the day. Listen up. I just pulled off a deal selling Alfonso Soriano and Edwin Jackson for Kendry Morales. I know I gave up a lot of names, but I don't like Soriano the rest of the way and think Jackson would ca really came out of nowhere. Did I make the right move, Scott? Well, you're right in saying that you gave up the bigger names. And for that reason, I think a lot of people might frown on this deal. I kind of like it, though. I think Morales is, is that good that you should consider trading players of this caliber. Soriano, we've talked about already some this year. Always a ridiculously streaky, streaky player. Hasn't had the hot streaks at all this year to compensate for the cold ones. I don't see how that's going to change over the last five weeks. And, and then the other guy here, Edwin Jackson. It's not so much that he came out of nowhere. It's just that as his innings accumulate, he's been struggling. Probably not going to pitch like an ace the rest of the way. Morales, though, looking like a clear stud now. He hasn't had a, a cold streak yet all season. He's just been getting better and better every month. His batting average actually increasing every month, except for one when it dropped from 286 to 282. So you can't even count it really. To me, he's looking like a 300 hitter with 35 to 40 homer power, a, an early round pick next year, as much as he's flown under the radar. I actually like him more than Pablo Sandoval, who, you know, everybody's high on him. What a breakout year for Kendry Morales. Yeah, that exactly. is just insane. Yeah, you are insane numbers. if you're not going to listen to this next question. You might have the same one. So listen up. My league requires four starting pitchers. I have Tim Lincecum. CeCe Sabathia is my top two. My remaining choices are Jason Marquis, Aaron Cook, Zach Duke, Barry Zito, and Clayton Richard. Other options are Scott Feldman, uh, John Lannon, and Brett Anderson. Which of that group would best fill out a four-man staff? Well, Lincecum and Sabathia are the obvious two at the top. I would actually pick up Scott Feldman and add him to your list of must-starts there, at least when he's on the road where he's 10-1 and one with the 292 ERA. For that last spot, I don't know that you want to limit yourself to just one guy. You might want to play the matchups more than that. But for the one guy you lean on the most, I think Barry Zito actually looks like the best choice now. 192 ERA over his last nine starts. And even during his best years, he was known as a second-half pitcher, so that's not completely unprecedented. He seems back on the map in fantasy and looks like somebody you can sit, could consider. I also like Brett Anderson, Jason Marquis maybe, depending on matchups, but Zito's the one you're going to want to lean on the most there. But don't restrict yourself. Play the field. Right. What are we talking about? Make, mix them and match them as it, as it fits best. We are talking about your third question of the day. You ready for it? We are. We had a trade go down in my league of Joe Maurer for Derek Jeter. I'm a commissioner, so I approved it thinking it was as fair as a trade could get, but I've caught a lot of grief for it. Do you think it was fair? I'm going to use this opportunity right here on Internet TV to come out and say that Joe Maurer <laughs> is going to be a first-round pick next year. Now that he has the power to go along with that 350, 360 batting average, the divergence at the catcher position between him and everybody else is enough to make you go for him that early. Can't say the same for Jeter, so in the strictest sense, I got to say the person who got Maurer got the better end of this deal. But let's not undersell Jeter year. He's having one of his best seasons during a Hall of Fame career as a top two or three fantasy shortstop. So if a guy really has a need at that position, has to go for somebody like as good as Jeter, I'm not sure that he has anything else he could give up to get him. A lot of it's based on needs, so even if one side gets the advantage slightly on paper, it still might be a trade worth doing. I think like the commissioner in this league did, the rest of the league just needs to calm down and let these two guys play. Tell those haters to hush, Chris. Yeah, be quiet. That's what Scott's saying. Scott is going to answer your last question of the day. Get ready. I am in a keeper league and can't help but think about next year. Whoa, overachiever. I can keep two of the following players. Carlos Beltran, Kevin Euclid, BJ Upton, Sean Figgins, Victor Martinez. The only one with no downside that I see is Uke, but I could make an argument for or against any of the others. Who do I keep? Well, Euclid is probably the most obvious one here. I think a lot of people make this keeper question too hard. If you're, if you're just keeping the best players you have and not having to consider when you drafted them last year or anything like that, you're just talking about which two players would be the most likely to go in the first two rounds next year. Unfortunately, you don't have anybody who would. Euclid is probably a third or fourth rounder. But the other guy who, who is 
in that neighborhood at all is Carlos Beltran. Despite all the time he's missed with the knee injury this year, he's normally a four category, maybe five category producer, and also goes in the third or fourth round. Now it is risky, and if you have to make a decision at the end of this season without waiting over the off season, then you might want to go with somebody safer at a weak position like Victor Martinez. But I think if you have whole off season to read about his progress, maybe even spring training to watch him play some games, I think Beltron is going to be the better choice for you. You can wait and see maybe when he's going in mock drafts early next season. Mm -hmm. If it's a third or fourth rounder there going ahead of everyone else on the list, then obviously he's your choice there with Eucalyptus. Because you have time. But you, all the rest of you, do not have much time. We have one month left, so you better email us your questions at DM Fantasy Baseball. DM Fantasy Baseball at CBS.com, right? That's right. Email us your questions. We'll get them on the show so we can help you win, right? We're working for you. For Scott White, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you real soon.